Ricky Nolasco was a starting pitcher who played in Major League Baseball for 12 seasons from 2006 to 2017. He played for four teams, but spent most of his time with the Florida slash Miami Marlins. In his career, he went 114 for 118 across nearly 1,900 innings pitched and over 300 starts. He holds a lifetime 4.56 ERA, 90 adjusted ERA, 1.327 whip, and a 13.1 war. He never made an all-star game, never received Cy Young votes, and never was part of any significant event. As you can tell, not the most memorable career. He was a workhorse who gave you a lot of innings at the cost of allowing many runs in the process. So, an okay pitcher, but not great outside of a couple seasons. Being that he was an underwhelming pitcher who played for a losing small market team for much of his career, he was relatively unknown to many. Despite the lackluster stats and seemingly quiet career, Nolasco had an intriguing season in 2009, one perhaps unlike any other. It's a season where I can't even tell if it was good or bad. The most horrific bad season ever, as I like to call it. You may be thinking, oh, this is like the video I made about Pedro Stasio, where he posted terrible traditional stats, but actually had good peripherals. In that video, I explain how playing in Coors Field at the height of the steroid era caused Astachio to post terrible stats, but he was actually a good pitcher due to his analytical statistics. Did Nolasco encounter a similar situation? Well, no. In his 2009 season, Nolasco went 13-9 across 31 starts and 185 innings pitched. He recorded a 5.06 ERA, 85 adjusted ERA, 1.254 whip, and a 0.7 war. All signs for a terrible season there, right? Well, maybe not. This season may have actually been great. You may be confused, as at least with Pedro Stasio in 1999, we could tell he was great due to his adjusted ERA and war despite a high ERA. Nolasco has a poor ERA, a poor adjusted ERA, and a poor war. What else can we judge this season on? That's where FIP comes into play. FIP, or Fielding Independent Pitching, is a saber metric that determines what a pitcher's ERA quote-unquote ought to be based on situations he can control. There are a few events that can happen in a plate appearance that results in the defense not touching the ball. The main three are a home run, a walk, and a strikeout. The more strikeouts a pitcher has, and the fewer home runs and walks he allows, the lower his FIP will be. Think of FIP as a fancy version of ERA, but why is it important? It's important because, in theory, it gives all pitchers an even playing field to judge them on. Doesn't ERA already do that, you might ask? Well, yes, barring one exception. You see, not all defenses are created equal, and naturally, some pitchers will be lucky and have a great defense behind them, while other pitchers will have a poor defense. A pitcher with an elite defense will, in theory, have a lower overall ERA than if he had a poor defense because his defenders will be able to get more outs on balls in play. Naturally, it makes sense that a great defense will be able to get more outs on balls hit in play than a poor defense. FIP attempts to fix that by adjusting to a neutral setting to judge all pitchers on. For example, in 2022, starters Joe Musgrove and Jose Quintana recorded an identical 2.93 ERA, but their FIPs wildly differed. Since Musgrove's was 0 .60 points higher, it may suggest he had a better defensive team than Quintana and was a little lucky with balls in play as his batting average on balls in play was below average. In a perfect world, 3.59 would have been Musgrove's ERA based purely off the event only he could control. There are also other factors that can skew FIP, but that's a basic summary of how it works. In reality, FIP doesn't differ too far in magnitude than ERA for the most part as they'll usually be only a tiny bit off from each other, but not always. Large differences in ERA to FIP are not too uncommon. What does this all have to do with Ricky Nolasco though? Well, what was his FIP in 2009? To go along with a 5.06 ERA, Nolasco recorded an FIP of 3.35. That's a 1.71 difference, nearly two full runs lower than his earned run average. That is a significant disparity. A difference in ERA to FIP that's more than a full run happens a handful of times a year, but Nolasco's in 2009 is quite special, something that practically never happens. 
A pitcher that posed an ERA that high and an FIP that low is an anomaly. To see just how much of an anomaly Ricky Nolasco's 2009 season was, let's compare it to other seasons all time. Among all qualified American League National League pitchers in MLB history to post an FIP of 3.35 or lower, Nolasco's 5.06 ERA is the second highest ever. Only Hall of Famer Early Win posted a higher ERA and lower FIP in a single season when he posted a 5.12 ERA and 3.07 FIP for the 1942 Washington Senators. In fact, most players at the top of the leaderboard are from pre-World War II. If we look at qualified pitchers in the integration era, the second place mark is over half a run lower. The difference between first place and second place is the same as second place and 41st place. Nolasco truly outpaces everybody else. In 2009 in particular, he ranked 75th out of 78 qualified starters in ERA, yet ranked 15th out of 78 in FIP. Perhaps an even more dueling comparison, out of those same 78 pitchers, Nolasco ranked 73rd in baseball reference war, yet ranks 19th in Fangraph's war. This is because Baseball Reference uses ERA and Outcome to judge war, while Fangraph's uses FIP and peripherals. How exactly do we judge the season? Using traditional stats, Nolasco was one of the worst starters in baseball that year, yet, using sabermetrics, he was also one of the better ones. I think a better question is, why is Nolasco's ERA and FIP so drastically different? That's not too difficult to answer. Nolasco has a great FIP because of his peripheral statistics. Despite a high ERA, Nolasco has a better than average whip, walks per 9 innings rate, and strikeouts per 9 innings rate. He was also about average in hits and home runs allowed, so he was excellent in keeping runners off base and limiting the long ball. In particular, his strikeouts to walk ratio was elite as he posted a 4.43 mark, the 5th best among all pitchers that season. And oh by the way, that 5.06 ERA is the highest mark ever in MLB history for a pitcher to also have a strikeout to walk ratio of at least 4.43. So what gives? If Nolasco was great at limiting hits, walks, and home runs while also striking out many batters, why is his ERA so high? There's two answers to that question. Number one was the Marlins defense. Florida was one of the worst defensive teams in Major League Baseball in 2009, posting the second lowest team D-War among all 30 teams. Having a bad defense will open the opportunity to more balls in play going for hits rather than outs. Number two, and probably the biggest reason, Ricky Nolasco was simply not a clutch pitcher. In 2009, Nolasco had 464 plate appearances with the bases empty and batter slash 223 with a 254 on base and 351 slugging for a 605 OPS off him, where he also posted an astounding 7.50 strikeouts to walk ratio in those situations. Absolutely outstanding. However, in 321 plate appearances with at least one runner on base, Hitter slash 317 with a 371 on base and 562 slugging for a 933 OPS. In 190 play appearances with runners in scoring position, 333 with a 392 on base and 618 slugging for a 1.010 OPS. Nolasco walked more batters in those 190 play appearances than he did in those 464 mentioned earlier. He was amazing when no one was on base. When there were runners on base, he was legitimately the worst pitcher in baseball. This is why his ERA and FIP differ so mightily. Being that drastically different in those situations will mess with one statistics. Those 464 batters faced with the bases empty account for 59% of the batters he faced and runners on base accounted for 41%, so almost an even 60-40 split. One of the best pitchers in baseball 60% of the time, but one of the worst pitchers the other 40% of the time. I don't think we'll ever see a season quite like this ever again. Sometimes stats on paper don't tell the whole story, and Ricky Nolasco's 2009 season is a story for the ages.